So, Billy, today we are going to take a closer look at Gate All Around. We kind of touched it. Uh, we kind of touched a little bit about it um, in a prior episode, but I think today we're going to learn a little bit more. Uh, I'm just, I, I know you're going to take the lead, so I'm going to just shut up and send it your way. Okay, so last week we uh, talked about the topic of Gate All Around Transistors. So for the most leading edge chips, um, not only are the transistors getting closer and closer and closer together, it's becoming harder and harder and harder to do. All of the foundries are investing like mad to uh, try to either retain their leadership in the case of Taiwan Semiconductor or catch up and surpass them as is the case with Samsung and Intel. Um, interestingly, Samsung, uh, so uh, not only are transistors getting closer and closer together, the structure of the transistors themselves within chips is now going into a transition to a new structure, which will also boost power, uh, boost uh, signal and power efficiency. And so this is called uh, gate all around technology. Uh, currently, the most leading edge chips are on something called FinFETs. So older chips had a planar uh, structure, which um, would touch the transistor source on one side. Now, uh, with the development of FinFETs, as you can see, and this is cause, because the uh, transistor looks like a fin sticking up like a shark fin, um, and it went vertical and could go through the gate, the gate would then touch the transistor on three sides, um, as you can see. And this led to be uh, being able to better control the transistor uh, and basically made a better chip. Now with this uh, transition to um, three nanometer and two nanometer chips, we are now going to gate all around, which is, as you can see, these are also called nano sheets. You have the transistors are actually stacked vertically and surrounded on all sides by the gate. Not only is this better control of each transistor, but you're going vertical, which I think means you can pack more transistors vertically into a chip, not just horizontally. So this is how quote unquote Moore's law is uh, keeps on going. And all of the major foundries are currently at the just beginning to invest in gate all around technology. Uh, so as you can see um, in gate all around, just going on to the lower part of that, this is from a LAM research, LAM Research's website. You'll see that in order to form the transistors, they're not only going to have to lay down materials and strip them away vertically, they're going to have to go down and then laterally. Um, almost like hydraulic fracking <laughs> in the ground for oil. Uh, and this is a very delicate and difficult and complicated task. Um, however, it appears that both uh, LAM research and applied materials have machines that can do this. I think LAM research, I think this blog post for LAM research came out in early 2022, just in time to make this uh possible and i want to talk about applied materials and land research because both of these companies have recently talked about uh, applied materials just had its earnings call land research just appeared at the jp morgan tech conference they talked about the opportunity uh in the gate all around uh transistor transition which is going to be happening in earnest starting next year in 2024 uh, so if, I guess you can go to the next slide as now as well, Jose. So, uh, in applied materials, uh, they think gate all around will lead to an incremental five points of market share in the FinFET to GAA transition. 
Discover the world of semiconductors without getting lost in the technical jargon. My new membership offers a perfect balance for investors looking to understand this exciting market. Using my electrical engineering knowledge and experience, I will release weekly exclusive videos ranging from quick 5-minute 101s to in-depth analysis, covering not just popular chip stocks, but aiming to explore every public semiconductor. Plus, join the private community of like-minded investors. Finally, I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. And check out fool.com slash Jose for the 10 best stocks to buy now. With that link, you get a promotional offer for the subscription service. Now, let's continue with today's episode. This is, I think, for etch and deposition intensity in general. Um, so in terms of capital expenditure intensity, you have... Metrology, etch and deposition, uh, lithography, packaging. So the etch and deposition part is going to be more complicated. I mean, everything gets more complicated, but I guess etch and deposition will become a lot more complicated and we'll get basically five incremental points of market share per transistor count um, in this transition. That should benefit applied materials and LAM research. Um, the management said uh, it's an incremental opportunity of about $1 billion for every 100,000 wafer starts of capacity. I think that means 100,000 wafer starts per month. Uh, that's usually the unit that, um, that uh, the industry uses. So I was curious kind of like how much would that really be in terms of the overall industry? So I went back and I looked at Taiwan Semi's uh, latest earnings report. They shipped 3.2 million wafers last quarter. So a little more than a million per month. Now, most of those wafers, I have to think, are trailing edge. Uh, Taiwan Semi got 51% of its revenue from 5 nanometer and 7 nanometer, which are considered leading edge. Those wafers probably are more expensive, though, than than uh, trailing edge. So I'm guessing maybe 300,000 wafer starts per month um, on the leading edge. Um, in addition, um, the new Taiwan, new TSM plants in the US that are being constructed will also be leading edge. I think one's for five nanometer, one's for three nanometer. Uh, FinFET's going to be used for uh, gate all around. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, FinFET's going to be used for five nanometer and maybe three nanometer. But just in terms of thinking how much, uh, so those fabs will be 600,000 wafers per year combined. So that's about 50,000 per month. Um, so I think it could be a few billion dollars extra of opportunity. Um, and then, of course, as we go forward in time, everything, you know, the most leading edge is all going to be gut gate all around. So um, I think LAM Research made about $18 billion in revenue over the last 12 months and Applied Materials maybe $25 billion-ish. So it's like an maybe an incremental 20%, 30% in a few years, I think. From this transition. Um, both companies claimed obviously they have differentiated solutions, they're well positioned, yada yada. Um, it's a duopoly, so, or oligopoly if you count Tokyo Electron as well. Um, so each should get their fair share. Um, applied Materials also specifically pointed out 2024 is when Gate All Around will start ramping. And I think this uh, means Samsung. Samsung is transitioning to gate all around for their three nanometer chips, whereas TSMC is still using FinFETs for three nanometer. Uh, however, uh, TSMC is going to go to gate all around, I believe, for two nanometer, which should be in 2025. Uh, Samsung is going to gate all around earlier because they hope to surpass TSM once they get to the two nanometer node. Samsung will have had experience with gate all around already, whereas TSM will be new to it. Um, I think we talked about that on a yep. recent podcast. 
Um, so, and then don't forget about Intel. I'm sure Intel is going to be investing like mad in gate all around as well. Uh, Lamb Research, also really optimistic. Um, they're super excited. Um, meaningful uptick is going to contribute in a big way to share gains. Uh, Lamb Management also noted they are the leaders in sort of 3D stacking architecture from their experience in NAND Flash. They're sort of the leaders in being able to stack uh, NAND flash modules on top of each other. Uh, so management said they, they're they sort of the go-to, they have the experience uh, in 3D structures, which should do them well in this transition on the logic side. And they pointed to the machines they already have for this that have done very well, Celis, Prevost, and Argos selective etch models. And then besides selective etch, there's also a good amount of new deposition, atomic layer deposition tools, which they also have. So I just think these companies are really poised to benefit. Um, each, so <laughs> it's NVIDIA day, so the whole <laughs> sector got a lift. Applied Materials was, uh, applied materials was up 7.2% um, 7 7 today. And LAM research was up 6.4% today. However, each is still below its all time high um, of late 2021. So we're obviously in a big memory downturn right now, which has hurt results of both. But Applied Materials trades at 17 times earnings, LAM trades at 16 and a half. Um, rev Re again, revenue this year might not be so great. Applied Materials did guide to sequentially like flattish to down in its current quarter. But I think when you get to 2024, you're going to see gate all around ramp and hopefully a memory recovery at some point in 2024. And the market tends to be forward looking. And there is also a lot of AI hype right now. So, um, uh, I'm not saying you have to rush out and buy these companies, but, um, they're big positions of mine and I continue to like them for the long term, uh, even at these prices, which are up meaningfully on the year. De definitely Billy. And I mean, I think we've talked about it in numerous episodes of why it, equipment companies in the semiconductor space can benefit. Um, and I, I don't think. I think when we've talked about them in the past, one of the reasons we've talked is just this huge move of building chips domestically, right? That's one of the main reasons as a lot of company, a lot of countries want to kind of build chips in, in land, um, not only for advanced nodes. We've also seen it in trailing edge nodes as well. Um, but another big growth opportunity here, like you mentioned, Billy, is just this kind of transition from FinFET to gate all around. Uh, like we saw from AMAT, these kind of incremental opportunity um, within this change. Um, so and another thing that you mentioned, we talked about it, Billy, I think in last the last week when we mentioned both these, FinFET and gate all around, can survive. They both can be used at... Uh, um, there, there might be some chips that might be that might be built in the future in the gate all around um, way, while there might be certain chips that might continue to be built uh, in the FinFET mode as well. Uh, so this is a pretty great opportunity, like you mentioned. I, I, I used to be, which is weird. I used to be a lot more bullish in semiconductor manufacturing companies like TSM, but I want to say in the past few months, I do believe that. There's a lot of potential in these semiconductor equipment companies, and they don't get the same type of love, I guess, because they're just not in the forefront of it. Everybody, for example, knows TSMC. Everybody knows Samsung. Everybody knows Intel. But no one knows about applied material. Barely no one knows about LAM research. So uh, I, 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 in the semiconductor space where maybe previously I was investing a little bit more in the growth opportunity, I feel like right now I want to go back into maybe more um, – some value, some growth, and I believe the the equipment side, in my opinion, provide that that great uh, mixture of both. Where it's not going to be a crazy growth story, but there's still some growth opportunities, and they come with usually some form of nice cash flow, some form of nice dividend, some form of nice either buybacks one one way or another. Uh, so 
definitely a market that many investors should continue to keep an eye out. Uh, so, Billy, any final thoughts before we close out this topic? Yeah, I love the equipment companies, as you know. We trade at reasonable valuations. They don't have high CapEx needs, so they generate a lot of free cash flow, um, even more so than the foundries. Um, and I know you said they're not really growth companies, but they if you look at them over the long term, their compounded growth is pretty impressive. Um, I think Applied Materials has compounded its earnings by like 30% or something for the last 10 years. Wow. Yeah. Um, which mm -hmm. is insane. Um, which is totally insane. Um, now, I, I might not expect that going forward, but I still think that you can get uh, a mid teens compounded growth, I would say, at least. Um, the, the, the thing with these companies is that they go through boom, you know, they go through a year where they, where they grow 60, 70, 80%, and then they'll decline 30% and then they'll go up 50%, you know, so that a lot of people are afraid to own these because of the cyclicality. But if you just keep your eye on the long term and kind of don't over leverage yourself and you're willing to kind of hold through these cycles, uh, you I don't, just just look at the performance of these companies over time, and uh, it, it'll you'll they've outperformed the Q the triple Qs. Uh, they're probably outperforming the Sox. Um, I I just continue to like these guys a lot, and they're going to be definite beneficiaries of AI. Uh, for sure, as well as the reshoring of manufacturing. I would say the only, the big risk I see out there is actually, we talked about the China, uh, Chinese demand. Um, China accounts for a lot of semiconductor demand and uh, NVIDIA's Jensen Wang actually pointed this out on last night's earnings call that we got to be careful about cutting China off too much from <laughs> all of our devices because uh, that's a good source of demand and that revenue turns into being able to invest in R&D. Um, and of course we don't want, and China does not have com reasonable competitors to applied materials and land research. Um, and we would not like them to develop them themselves. Not easy to do, but um, just uh, Chinese demand for electronics, I think is something to keep an eye on. But other than that, Assuming that doesn't fall off a cliff, I mean, the future is very bright for these guys. Um, and it's one more thing. Both of these companies have pretty healthy services business, which is about 20 to 35% of their revenues. So it's not unlike Apple that has, you know, the cyclical hardware, and then you have services attached to the installed base. And that should be pretty steady growth, steadier through the cycle than um, equipment sales. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for that, Billy. And I think that's a great way to end this segment.